Welcome or welcome back to the Royal Australian Historical Society's project on researching soldiers in your local area. This is a video dedicated to the resources held by the Australian War Memorial and hopefully you've watched our introductory video on tracing a soldier's name from your local War Memorial through a variety of online resources. This is one of the videos that will delve more deeply into each of those resources mentioned in that video. We are going to revisit the same soldier we searched for on that video, Carl Adele. So if we have the Australian War Memorial site open on our computer, we'll go to the collection and we can search for our soldier. Now, luckily enough, Carl has a very uncommon last name, so we'll be fine just searching with his surname because we're only returning a result of six people. If you were researching someone, say John Smith, for example, you'll probably come up with upwards of 300 results. So it's always best to try to pick a name from your war memorial uh, that you think will be easier for you to search for and narrow down your results. So there are six people on this search. And if we scroll down, we find Carl's entry. So it has a brief summary, including his service number, unit, and the conflict he fought in. So we'll open up Carl's page. Now we have a summary of his service record, uh, including the ranks he held, when he was born, where he was born, and when and where he died, which was on the 16th of May, 1915, in Gallipoli. If we scroll down, we'll see the nominal roles that Carl is mentioned in. So he is in the First World War nominal role, which is a record of all First Australian Imperial Force troops who went overseas and it was made after they returned home or were killed in action overseas. Carl's also listed on the embarkation role, which is a record of the troops who left Australia to fight overseas. And he is also listed on the Roll of Honour, which is only for soldiers who died overseas during war service or died at home as a result of their war service. So if we just briefly look at, we'll open up the embarkation role first because that was the first that was created chronologically. And we can see there's an image of the actual document, a bit blurry, but we can enlarge it here. But we'll just scroll down first because, again, there's a handy summary on the War Memorial site, including the date that Carl embarked, which was the 20th of October 1914, which is a very early embarkment uh, in the First World War, and the ship that he embarked on, which was the Star of Victoria. So we can enlarge this image, if we like, and have a look more closely at the information here. So the embarkation roles aren't alphabetical. Uh, they're ordered via uh, service number. So Carl's service number is 554. So if we just scroll down here, we'll find 554 and here is Carl. And it gives us a few extra details, including his rank, which is a trumpeter, uh, which is a bit of an uncommon rank. It's not exactly private, it's not Lance Corporal. It means exactly what it says. He carried a trumpet with him into war. And it tells us his age at enlistment, 22, his occupation, commercial traveller, his marital status, he was single, his address, time of enlistment, uh, Wollstonecraft, his next of kin and address, also Wollstonecraft, his religion, Church of England, and the date of his enlistment, the 7th of the 9th, 1914. So if we go back to Carl's page, we'll open up the nominal role next, which has a few extra details, again, summarized down below here. And this tells us that Carl uh, died of his wounds on the 16th of May, 1915. Interestingly, Carl's name is actually misspelled on the nominal role. This was unfortunately quite common Obviously, people creating these documents were dealing with a vast number of names, troops, and there are several spelling mistakes and even omissions. So if we zoom in here, we see Carl's record here, 
and it's been misspelled as a delm, but we can be 100% sure that it is actually Carl Adelt uh, because all the other details are the exact same. So if we scroll across here, we'll see his unit, the date of his enlistment, and DOW, which is died of wounds. So the other common abbreviations of single and nominal role are RTA, return to Australia, DOD, died of disease, and KIA, killed in action. And we'll just finally have a look at the role of honour uh, for Carl, which is, again, created for his troops who died as a result of the war. And it shows his place of commemoration as well and the location. If you were to go to the War Memorial in person, you'd be able to locate your local soldier on the physical role of honour. And this is briefly mentioned in our previous video, but Carl's record actually has a circular attached, which was a form filled out by a next of kin in the First World War um, with extra details about the deceased. So Carl's mother, Nellie, filled this record out and it just gives us a bit of extra information. So it tells us specifically that he was 22 years and eight months at the time of his death. Uh, the high school he went to, Fort Street, and additional biographical details that he was a great swimmer, a member of the Manly Surf Life Saving Club, and that he enlisted in the AIF um, on the day that war was declared. So one of the very first enlistees from Australia. So if we go back to the page where we originally searched for Carl, we'll see the other people's results. Now, there are two records for a Burton adult, one record for a Rolf adult from the Second World War, and we'll return to him later, and two records for a Rudolf adult. Now, sometimes there will be multiple records for the same person on the War Memorial site. It is the same person, you can see for Burton, it's the same service number, 6311, 6311. It's the same man. The records have just been placed under separate headings and haven't been collected like they were under Carl's. So we'll have a quick look at Burton. And at this point, we can assume that perhaps Burton and Carl and Rudolph are related. It was an uncommon surname, but we can find that out when we have a look at their records. So... Acting Corporal Burton Adelts, his embarkation role is here. So we can open that up like we did with Carl's. We'll have a quick look. So it shows us that, so he's right at the top. So he was a motor mechanic and he did indeed live at Belmont Avenue, Wollstonecraft and his father was Carl Adelts' father. So they were brothers. And he enlisted more than a year after Carl on uh, December 1915. And he is also listed here on the nominal role. So if we open that up, we can have a look for Burton Adelt. And here he is. So he was in the first field engineers and he returned to Australia in January 1917. So this early return from the war suggests to us that perhaps he was wounded or ill uh, or something else causing him to return to Australia and be discharged before the war was over. And we can see right next to Burton is Rudolph, perhaps another brother, and right above him is the misspelled Carl Adelm. Should be adult, he should be down here with Burton, but they're all collected on the same nominal role. Now we'll just have a quick look at... Rudolph and we'll open his records up again the records of the same person same service number 1633 so for Rudolph there is an embarkation role and a nominal role once again so we can open this one up and have a look Yep, so Rudolph doesn't have any extra information it doesn't tell us his age uh, or his job unfortunately but again, it shows us his address, his next of kin, another brother in the adult family. So we'll open up his nominal role, which is the same one that uh, his brothers were listed on. But we'll just open it up separately anyway. And we see here Rudolph is here. He was enlisted with the 12th Light Horse, 
like his brother, and he enlisted in October of 1915 and returned to Australia in 1919, so well after the war had ended. Now, because Rudolph and Burton don't have records on the Roll of Honour and because they're listed as returned to Australia on their nominal rolls, we know that both those brothers returned home after the war and unfortunately their other brother, Carl, did not. And just briefly, we will have a look at the other adult in our search, Rolf, who fought in the Second World War and maybe another relation. So Rolf's record is from the Roll of Honour, indicating that he did die in the Second World War. Let me open this up. So this provides a summary of the Roll of Honour and it tells us his rank, Lance Sergeant, his unit, the field regiment, and the date, place, and cause of his death, which is listed here as accidental, which is quite interesting. And it tells us he is buried at the Cairo War Memorial Cemetery. Again, we see the location of Rolf on the Roll of Honour, and there is also a circular attached to his record. The circulars used in the Second World War are quite different from the First World War. Uh, in World War I, they were filled out by next of kin, but in World War II, they were filled out by the Directorate of War Graves and contain much less biographical and interesting details. It's a bit more official, as you can see, a typed up record just clarifying some information about Rolf, his occupation, a clerk, where he was born, which is meant to be wild. <laughs> misspelled there, and his parentage, which are listed here as Rudolf Adelt, the very same Rudolf who fought in World War I, uh, Carl's brother, and who returned to Australia. So that is about it for looking at official uh, records for your local soldier held in the War Memorial. But just briefly, we can take a look at some other interesting things that you might be able to find out about your local soldier's war service. So coming back to Carl, we know that Carl was in the 1st Australian Light Horse Regiment. So we can actually look up the 1st Australian Light Horse Regiment to find out a bit about, a bit about them and a bit about the unit that Carl or your local soldier fought in. So we'll go back to our collection and search for the Light Horse Regiment. We'll open units and... Australian War Memorial usually has information about uh, most regiments. Okay, so we've searched for the Light Horse Regiment. Sometimes you do have to scroll a fair bit uh, to find the page you're looking for. So in this case, we'll go to the second page of search results. And here we will find uh, some information on the 1st Australian Light Horse Regiment. So we'll open that up and it will show us where they were formed, the notable events that they fought in, battle honours, notable commanding officers, and detailed description about their war service. So interestingly, if we come down to this second paragraph, we can see that the first light horse landed at Gallipoli on the 12th of May 1915. If we go back to Carl's page, we see he died on the 16th of May 1915, which means he died four days after landing at Gallipoli. So you'll be able to find some information about your local soldier's unit and be able to place it and their fate, whether or not they were killed in action or returned to Australia amidst the wider circumstances of their unit's war. And one last thing, an interesting detail about Carl in particular, as we've mentioned before, he was a trumpeter. What is a trumpeter? Let's look it up. Okay, so we'll go back to the War Memorial collection. We will look up trumpet and light horse because that's the unit Carl was in. So we have a fair few results. We'll open up photographs and heraldry. And our first result here is actually an artifact, so a cavalry bugle held by a Sergeant Gately, who was not Carl, but he was in the 12th Light Horse Regiment of the Australian Imperial Force in the First World War. And we can safely assume this is the same or very similar instrument to the one that Carl would have carried in the war. 
And if we go to our photographs page, we can scroll down to this image here, which actually shows us light horse trumpeters with their instruments on the deck of a troop ship. Likely exactly what Carl would have been carrying, wearing during the war um, until his death on the 16th of May 1915. So the Australian War Memorial is a great resource for your research into your local soldiers. These are just a few ideas to kickstart your exploration, but I encourage you to keep searching, keep diving into all the information here, and later videos will explore other online resources for you to research your soldier within.